Welcome back to another video on the channel. In this one I'm going to be previewing and giving my predictions for the Women's French Open semi-finals. I have done another video uh, for the men's semi-finals which take place on Friday, so do check it out as well. But this certainly isn't the semi-final lineup that I expected. You know, I thought we'd see Garbina Muguru through and Simona Halep in the semis. Uh, obviously we haven't got either of them two, we haven't got Serena Williams. Um, yeah, it's wide open draw now. All four players have fancy themselves to win the title. And we're going to have two fantastic semi-finals today. Um, quite similar in the sense that we've got Podoroska against Sviatek. Uh, neither of those have won Grand Slams, both young and experienced players. And on the side of the draw, we have Petra Kvitler against Sophia Kennan. Obviously, both those players have won Grand Slam titles in the past. Um, so we've got a mix of sort of Grand Slam champions against each other and the young inexperienced players against each other. So we're going to have two yeah, fantastic semi-finals and I'm sure we'll have a great final on Saturday, whoever wins today. Uh, so kicking things off with Nadia Podoroska against Iga Sviatek. And I haven't seen a lot of Podoroska before this week and I think people will be lying if they say they have before. Uh, she has only really competed in ITF tennis. She's ranked 131st in the world. The only previous time of qualifying for a Grand Slam is back in 2016, the US Open, she reached round one. Um, so this has literally come out of absolutely nowhere, this run. She's been Putin saver, Shmiel Lover, and Lena Svitolina on the way on the way to reaching the French Open semi-finals. And it's impossible to say where this form has come from. You know, she's a young player, 23-year-old from Argentina. Uh, but hopefully it sets alight her career and she continues to, to light up the court and produced tennis that she has this week which has been fantastic throughout uh, fully deserving of a place in the last four but it's quite amazing that you know to think she's reached the first round of a grand slam on just one occasion turns up at the french, french open after a, a you know massive long break and reaches a semi-final and plays some unbelievable tennis um, but that's just the sport that we're in it can happen and i think it's brilliant when it does uh, nice to have different names at the top um, competing for Grand Slams and yeah, hopefully she, she continues this upward curve of her career. Um, so for Podoroska, as I say, I haven't seen loads of her but I've seen a few of her matches uh, this tournament and she has the massive ground strokes but for me, why she's in the semi-final and why she beats for Elena so easily the other day is the deft touches, the drop shots. Um, the, she uses a slice a lot on a slow, heavy, low bouncing surface. Um, it's been used to Big effect, you know, against Fitalina. She she uses she took the pace off the ball a lot. We know Fitalina's got a big game. She likes to hit winners. She likes to move into the court. And Podoroska kept the ball low. Um, as I say, she used the drop shots a lot, the deft touches. And if you're getting the ball over the court, over the net by an inch or two, like Podoroska was consistently, uh, it makes it incredibly difficult for the player to get rhythm and tying the ball. And Fitalina struggled all day, and Podoroska won that match pretty easily in the end. Um, I do think she can cause sphere tech problems um, by bringing it to the net, keeping her wide, playing from deep where she can't tear from the forehand. We know sphere tech is a player that likes to attack the short ball, she likes to move into the court, she likes to keep the short uh, rally short. But as I say, Podoroska is a player who can definitely stop her from doing that, you know, keep off the forehand, keep her back behind the baseline, keep the ball low um, and she does have a serious chance in my opinion of winning this match uh, she's very open to play against an orthodox and the fact that she's came on the scene from nowhere has been you know not a lot of players have played against her um, so it's going to take some working out as uh, so moving on to sphere tech who is a 19 year old superstar you know we talked about the teenagers in women's tennis in you know amanda nisimova uh, coco goff and Leila Fernandez and they're all fantastic young talents that I'm sure will have fantastic futures in the game but I think Sphere Tech often goes under the radar. Um, this is by far the best a teenager's done in a Grand Slam of a women's event for a long, long time. Um, she reached the fourth round of the Australian Open as well this year so she's had a fantastic year um, showing this is no fluke and on the way to her first ever Grand Slam semi-final she's beat Marquette of Andrusova. Simona Halep in what was just an incredible performance that I'll touch on in a minute and um, Trevi Sant in the quarterfinals of Italy. Um, that performance against Halep was quite incredible and you know arguably one of the best women's performances I've seen from an underdog um, for a lot of years particularly in the Grand Slam. You know Halep entered this tournament on the back of winning two clear court events. She skipped the US hard court season to 
prioritise the French. Um, you know, coming to Boucher's and Claire, and for me, she was a massive favourite entering this tournament. Um, Hallett looked very good throughout him, was a massive favourite going in the match against Viatek. Um, we know how good Halep is defensively, how well she covers the court, how quick she is, um, the counter-punching style seemed perfect for a heavy clay court, um, but Sviatek just blew her away. I think she hit 17 winners in the first set against Simona Halep, which is literally unheard of. Um, to hit 17 winners against Simona Halep in a hard court is a, is a would be a good result. To do that in one set on a heavy clay court shows you just how well Sviatek is striking and hitting the ball. Um, the power she's got in the forehand is ridiculous really for a player of her age. Um, she is still also in the doubles draw which I think can bring positives and negatives. The positives the fact that she's you know, probably improving in and around the net. She's probably more confident volume now and serving volume if she needs to be. Uh, that Now that she has been playing doubles and being successful um, she's probably reading the court as well as anybody having played more and more tennis. But also that could bring fatigue, you know, she's played a lot more match tennis than what Podoroska has this week and what Kvitova and Kennan have as well if she was to reach the final. Um, will that fatigue catch up on her? We don't know. You know, she might still be very fresh, she is still young. Um but you know, a long two or three hour match could could um you know see problems for Sviatek on that physical front but that were meant to be seen for at the minute you just have to go on with the form she's shown and you really can't <laughs> touch a form. Um, you know, that win over Halep was undoubtedly the career best performance in win. Um you were sort of waiting for Halep to come back into the match and turn it round like Halep does, but she just couldn't deal with the power and strength and veracity of the ground strokes of Sviatek who served and just played fantastically throughout and, you know, served it out, uh, as if she'd done it many, many times but yeah, these younger players for me just getting better and better on the WTA and we're going to see so many classic matches down the line. Um, so yeah, I've just got down there my notes. Sevilla, Texas, the ruthless ball striker with a massive forehand. Um, will carry huge confidence from the Halep win. And yeah, just playing some outstanding tennis. And this is a difficult match to predict. I've gone over this one a couple of times. On the one hand, you've got Podoroska who just seems to her name seems to be on the trophy, you know, she's came out of absolutely nowhere, 131st in the world, yet to make a decent run at the Grand Slam in her career. To reach the semi-finals, playing the way she is, I think the conditions have felt absolutely perfect for her game. Uh, the slice, the drop shots, the deft touches around the net are perfect for the surface in Paris this week. On the other hand, you've got Sofia Tech, who's probably the, one of the upcoming superstars of the game. Um, got the massive ground strokes and it's a, you know, it's a, very difficult matchup. Uh, I think stylistically it'll be a brilliant match, but I am going to have to go with Sviatek. Uh, I think it'll be three sets. I wouldn't be surprised if Podorowska won the opening set, but I think once Sviatek starts stepping into the court and reading the play of Podorowska, then her pose is too much for anybody uh, to deal with at the moment. And the way she's striking the ball um, is just exceptional, I think. There's very little you can do on the other side of the court. Um, if Podoroska was to win the opening set and it was to go deep, it would be interesting to see what Sphere Tech has left in the legs after, say, playing singles and doubles. But that will remain to be seen. But I do fancy Sphere Tech to reach her first ever Grand Slam final uh, in three sets. Uh, so moving on to semi final number two. Petra Kvitova, who's obviously two time Wimbledon champion, um, yet to drop a set this week. Um, she's probably the favourite left in the draw having won the two Grand Slams in the past and bringing the experience that she does uh, so far as the ventures be the young teenager Leila Fernandez, uh, Zhang of China and Laura Siegmund in the quarterfinals of Holland for Kvitova this week I've felt every match up as the matches on a racket and I think that's the case of a lot of Petra Kvitova matches um, if she serves one and gets in the forehand consistently it's more or less game over for everybody else in the world um, if the power that she possesses of the forehand, the consistency. You know, she paints the lines from out from side to side. A double and a backhand is very strong, um, but her serving and forehand is the two main weapons, but although you know what's coming, they're very, very difficult to stop. Uh, I think Siegman yesterday Kvitova did play a couple of bad games in either set, but I think she was always in control. As soon as she stepped it up and managed to work the ball into her forehand, Siegman couldn't get the ball back, it's more or less impossible um, to maintain a neutral position and 
put your authority on the match and convert the strike in the forehand from the back of the court. Uh, she very rarely misses. And as I say, she paints the lines of real power, so there's very little you can do. And Siegman just couldn't stop her getting on the forehand yesterday, and it was the right was on the wall from very early in the match. Uh, moving on to Sophia Kennan, who obviously won the Australian Open this year. I don't think she's played her best tennis this week, uh, but she's in the semi-final, so she's done something right. And I've spoken a lot about Kennan's attitude and her mental strength at a very young age, and I think that's what's got her here. Um, she hasn't played, you say, the prettiest tennis or her best tennis. I'm sure she'll be the first to admit that. Um, but she's fighting very hard. She's producing the best tennis in the big moments. Caught her match yesterday against Danielle Collins and just her ability to perform under pressure, see a break point at crucial stages is massive uh, for a player of her age. I think it's going to stand her in very good stead and uh, she's a player who I think will go a long, long way and that mental strength and stability will be a part of that. Um, producing her best tennis in the biggest moments is exactly how she won the US Open. You know, beating Ashley Barty in the semi-finals, beating Garbina Muguruza in the final and the third set. Um, as I say, a player of her age who shows immense maturity and yeah, just a, a fantastic young player. Double handed backhand is a huge weapon of hers, very solid, very consistent, great across court. Um the forehand doesn't have too much on it, but you know, manoeuvres plays well around the court with it, plays it deep. Um she's a very good defender, she sticks in rallies, she fights it out, um, very fit. And her drop shots have worked incredibly well this week, you know. The drop shot has been a massive shot this French Open, low bouncing courts. Um a lot of players sitting back behind the baseline ready for the long rallies and the drop shots have really threw players off this week and been a massive success and I think Kennan's probably on the women's draw used the drop shot the most effectively her and Podoroska which is why they're probably in the semi-finals um, so yeah for Kennan saving break points winning tie breaks coming back from behind which has done a lot in her career is exactly why she's in the semi-final and this again complete 50-50 for me I'm a massive fan of Sophia Kennan um, as I say, mental strength, the all-round game, the defence, the double-handed backhand cross-court, the drop shots, I think the conditions are quite good for Kennan. Um, she does have the experience now of winning the Australian Open. She knows how to perform at these big stages of events. Um, and for me, I was actually going to... I started this video by predicting Kvitov to win this match, but I'm going to change my mind after what I've just said. Um, I think Sophia Kennan comes through this one in three sets. I think... Kennan's very good at problem solving um, and very good at identifying other players' positives um, and negating that. Um, obviously, we know Kvitova, she's not one-dimensional, but we know her main weapon is a forehand. Everybody in the world knows that, but it's one thing knowing it and one thing stopping it. Uh, but if anybody's going to, I think Sophia Kennan is, that, is going to do that. Um, Kennan, yes, I say, she's used the drop shot very effectively, um, and I think she's going to have to nail that every time of the day, bring Kvitov into the net um, and you know look to hit passing shots, you can't really trade four hands from the back of the court against Kvitov, there's only ever going to be one winner but I do think it'll be a very very close match and it's going to edge towards Kennan um, in set three due to that mental strength and ability to perform under the pressure moments, I think she could win a close third set but there are going to be two fantastic semi-finals um, I will be covering them on my Twitter account as I'm watching them, so if you do want to follow me on that, um, I will leave the link in the description below. I have also done a men's preview and prediction video for the semi-finals, so if you do want to check that out, that is already on the channel. And I am working for Grand Slam Tennis Online, doing live text commentaries. I might be doing one this afternoon, I'm mature, but if not, definitely some over the weekend. Um, so I will leave a link to that as well, if you want to check out the website. But thanks for watching the video. Uh, please like and subscribe and comment if you've got any thoughts on the tennis. And I always happy to debate and have a chat about tennis. Um, so if you are up for leaving a comment, uh, please like and subscribe. And I will see you on the next video.